Welcome to the Artists in Conversation discussion as part of the 2020 Wood Street Youth Arts Prize. Today you're joined by Mitchell Webster, Chandler Brooks Smith, and myself, Georgia Steele. We make up the Emerging Curators Program and have the exciting task of putting this year's prize together. So, how has this year impacted your practice and visibility as a young artist? Yeah, it's been an interesting year, hey? <laughs> totally. <laughs> At the start of the year, I found that first lockdown to be extremely difficult. Um, feeling super freaked out by it all, I mean, by everyone, like everyone was. But um, I just, like, spent a month, <laughs> that first month in bed, just, like, paralysed with fear. Mm -hmm. But then I came out of that and, of course, I made this piece, Danger, 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 kind of just as a reaction to everything that's been happening right now. But now during this second lockdown, I'm feeling actually more empowered as a young artist. And I've been able to tap into more visibility in a way. Sorry, Chelsea, is that through social media or? Yeah, yeah. Before I found I've never really enjoyed social media. I didn't like spending time on it. Um, I didn't realize how, how much of the day that I actually spent traveling to and from wherever I was going. Now just being in one place has actually given me more time to create art, uh, more time to think about what I want to do, uh, engaging globally on social media, actually enjoying social media for once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been pretty interesting. And now I feel like I'm kind of, happy and in a good place with it all like coming to terms with it has been a wild ride but yeah so have you been like working from home mostly mm -hmm. i've just sort of converted the garage into a little studio type space <laughs> it's gloomy but it was fine during winter because i mean raining and everything mm -hmm. outside it's become a little bit of an art cave down there that's great <laughs> yeah but I'm living with a few housemates as well and they've all been really chill and happy to let me use the space for whatever I want. So that's been really awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so Chelsea, how has art helped you shape your voice as a young artist? For me, art is a way to make sense of the world. And this year I've spent so much time just feeling confused and not really understanding what's going on. There's a lot of complicated issues outside of COVID that are happening politically and socially all over the world at the moment. Um, art is a way for me to make sense of everything in my own way. I take images, I can reinterpret things and mm -hmm. make something that makes me feel more safe and makes sense of the information that I see every day. Um, and what's drawn you to the meaning that you've used? Um, do you think that's helped you with your concepts for this piece? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And in this particular instance with this piece, the medium actually drove the concept. So usually I'm a fashion designer actually, and I make garments totally from upcycled fabric. And I try to reuse as many scraps as I possibly can because sustainability and um, fabric waste is really important to me, like using as much waste as possible, make sure that I'm not making any waste or anything like that. But even with that method of making clothing, there are still some random scraps, some random unusable bits that I left on, that I, um, that I end up with at the end of the day. And... So this particular piece, I thought I wanted to make something to give a use to these totally random little bits of scrap that I end up with. So I wanted to take my fashion concept, which is sustainability and fabric waste, and kind of translate that into an artwork. That, so then all, all, of this, all of the waste is being used, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to develop like a zero waste practice in that sense. That's definitely something uh, a lot of artists should be thinking about. 
So when I was making the piece, uh, I was thinking about so many different things that I kind of couldn't really pick one thing. I was like, I want to make this um, kind of like a politically charged piece. I want it to be relevant to what's happening now. But then so many things are happening right now that I couldn't really decide. But there's alarm bells in my head that are like saying danger. (laughs) If that makes sense. There's a lot of danger. Well, Black Lives Matter movement, Mm -hmm. the pandemic, obviously, um, navigating society as a woman, um, politically, there's a lot of things happening in our government at the moment, which make me feel like I'll be in danger in mm-hmm. the future. Yeah, uh, it's scary. And global warming, obviously, is my sort of primary motivator for this piece and motivator in my practice. And, yeah, the future <laughs> really screams danger in that category. And I think when we were going through, when we were shortlisting the works, um, we did that with two local artists, um, Fung No and Nikki Lam, and um, it was unanimous that we were all really um, captivated in your work, but also we really, it, it really spoke the words that we wanted it, like it spoke the words that we think the, the exhibition should come to because um, we're really thankful that you submitted this piece um, we're really glad that it speaks to all of the artworks in the prize um, mm-hmm. and that it's used as a focal point and that you've um, been able to share with us what you've been able to create through this tough time this year. Um, mm-hmm. We can't imagine how hard it's been for young artists. Um, and yeah, we're just glad that you decided to apply so we could share your work with our community and, um, especially with the Hobson's Bay community. So, yeah, thank you. And um, thanks for answering those questions so well. Um, Thank you. That's really kind. (laughs) And continue doing what you're doing. (laughs) 